So now that we know what the FFT is, it's just a specific way of computing the DFT, and now that we know why we would be interested in this algorithm, namely because it's so efficient at computing the, uh, the DFT, let's actually dive into some of the algorithm details and start to understand how the FFT works and why it's able to do this computation so quickly. So let's return to the basic DFT equation, which is written right here. This DFT equation says to compute the rth sample of the DFT, I perform this summation operation where f of k, f sub k, is related to my discrete time signal. You can think of this as just the discrete time signal f of k if you'd like. It's weighted by this complex exponential, and it is summed from k equals 0 to n minus 1. So this operation is what we have to, to compute to compute the rth sample of the DFT, and we perform this computation for each value of r of interest. So if I was going to do a DFT and implement this in MATLAB myself, I would do a little for loop on r, and for a fixed value of r, I would then have another for loop that performed this computation probably, and I would just loop through, and for each value of r, I would do this computation and just do this computation in kind of a double for loop manner. Let's actually write out what this is for one of those computations. Let's actually write out what it would take to compute the quantity f2. So in this example right here, we've let r equal 2. So when r is equal to 2, all the r's here get replaced by 2. And we can actually write out this sum in just the list form. So this right here is the k equals 0 term, so we've replaced k with 0. We have a 0 up here as well. This is the k equals 1, k equals 2 all the way to n naught minus 1. So we've actually written out what this math looks like for one of the DFT coefficients. And by looking at this now, we can see what it takes to do this computation. This term has a complex multiplication. I have this f0 times this complex exponential. There's another complex exponential multiplication here, or I'm sorry, another complex multiplication here, because so I have f1 times this complex exponential. There's another complex multiplication here, and all of these terms actually have a single complex multiplication. So when I compute f2, it actually takes n naught complex multiplications, because I have one for each of these terms. Similarly, I have additions going on. There's an addition here, and an addition here, and an addition here. There's basically a complex addition between each one of these terms. So when I go and I compute F2, I need n naught minus 1 complex additions to perform this operation. So to compute F2, I have to do n naught minus 1 complex additions and n naught complex multiplications. But f2 isn't the only thing I need to compute. I also need to compute f0 and f1 and f3 and f4 all the way up to n0 minus 1. So let's think about that. If I have to do this same type of complex additions and same number of complex multiplications for each term of my DFT, f0, f1, f2, all the way up to f n0 minus 1, I can now tally up the total number of complex multiplications and complex additions for doing the entire DFT computation. There are n naught of these that I need to do, so I have n naught computations to do, each of which takes n naught complex multiplications. So that's n naught times n naught, or n naught squared complex multiplications. Similarly, I have n naught of these computations I need to do, each of which required n naught minus 1 complex additions. So there's a total of n naught times n naught minus 1 complex additions that I need to perform. When we do analysis of the order of operations, if I was to multiply this out, I would have n naught squared minus n naught. Typically, we only care about the order of operations for large n. When n is large, n naught squared minus n naught is approximately n naught squared. So for large n, I need n naught squared complex multiplications, and I need n naught squared complex additions. So this is why a kind of brute force implementation of the DFT is said to have complexity n naught squared, because I need about n naught squared total number of operations. 
Again, if you want to think of it as n naught squared multiplies and n naught squared additions for a total of 2 n naught squared, that's fine, but when we count or, uh, order of operations, any leading factors like a 2, we don't care about that. What really matters is the n naught squared because n naught is really large. If n naught is, say, a billion, 2 times a billion times a billion is basically still just a billion times a billion. We don't really care about the factor of 2. So this is why we say that the DFT has complexity on the order of n naught squared. So as n gets large, the number of operations goes up with the square of n.